Chapter 54 Unique Throwing Dagger Skills Just as was previously mentioned, a fatty has a fatty's intelligence. He had purposefully created that hubbub previously, but had shown weakness to his enemy to allow his opponent to think he was five meridians true chi. As the boxing or near Zhuo Nu on, fatty abruptly displayed his hidden ace. This punch concentrated the essence of fatty Zhuo's six meridians true chi, concentrated his recent boundless wrath, and concentrated the ambition of a grudge holding fatty who wanted to make the ultimate comeback. Zhuan Yu An almost had no time to react before he hastily thrust out his palm to meet the incoming attack. The moment that Zhuan Yu An's palm met Fatty's fist, Zhuan Yu An experienced what was called the disparity. The boxing aura that encompassed six levels of spiraling power was like a drill, instantly turning his entire arm into broken scraps of chopped meat. The boxing aura wasn't decreased a single bit, and the punch landed on his chest. Apfff! A mouthful of fresh blood spewed out like an arrow. Zhuan Yuan's entire body was like a kite that had lost its string as he was driven off the stage, thrown backwards more than ten meters as he crashed into a large pillar. When people looked at him again, blood was streaming from the seven orifices of his head, and a large hole had been opened at his chest. His head was lolling on his shoulder and it was apparent that he was more than dead. What? This? Six layers of boxing aura? Zhuan Zhuan has broken through? Even the Duke of Jinshan hadn't imagined this scene in his wildest dreams, not to mention Zhuan Yuan's supporters. His son had won, and won so easily. Fatty Zhuan stood on the demonstration stage, the fat on his body vibrating from his trembling. My Jin family can descend in the world, but absolutely cannot have traitors. Those who betray the family, die. It was the first time that Fatty Zhuan had given off the feeling of killing intent. What happened next was a bit more bloody. As the Duke of a territory, the Duke of Jinshan's methods were completely displayed. After Fatty Zhuan won on the demonstration stage, the Duke of Jinshan also revealed the extraordinary parts about him. He ordered several elders to be fully controlled and displayed the evidence of them flocking to the Duke of Soaring Dragon's banner and betraying the family. Beheaded, house raided. The inner turmoil within the Jinshan household was quickly handled in a clean and efficient method. This even elicited admiration from Zhang Chen. This Duke of Jinshan, whether in terms of ferocity or cruelty, was much stronger than the likes of his old man Zhang Fengs. Of course, it was understandable why ferocious and cruel ways were employed to settle internal turmoil. With regards to traitors, no family had ever been irresolute when firmness was needed. The anticipated reversal caused no particular ripples in Zhang Chen's heart. Fatty Zhuang profusely expressed a thousand thanks and ten thousand gratitudes, and wanted Zhang Chen to stay as a guest. However, seeing that so many heads had rolled due to the Jinshan household settling its inner conflict, it was obviously an inappropriate timing to stay as a guest. Zhang Chen left thereafter. Back at this manner, he received an astounding piece of news. His father Zhang Feng had emerged from training. Except, the only ones who knew this secret were temporarily Zhang Ying and Zhang Fu. Zhang Feng had indeed emerged from training and had successfully broken through, smoothly entering ten meridians true qi, joining the ranks of the true qi masters. The true meaning of this was that he had entered the ranks of the strength of the premier dukes. Congratulations father. Zhang Chen was still very happy for his father. Ha ha Chenner, why be so polite between father and son? Not to mention, if it wasn't for you, your father would likely have reached my limit at nine meridians true qi. Zhang Feng had always been quite easy going in front of his son. Zhang Chen detailed the happenings of the Jinshan household and also conveniently went over some particulars of the current situation. Zhang Feng nodded, it's best that the Duke of Jinshan could handle his matters this way. According to your words, the Duke of Soaring Dragon is likely to rebel within the next half year? Based on my speculations, with his level of patience, it will most likely occur within this half year. Chenner, on which side would you say our Zhang family should take our place? Zhang Feng actually asked Zhang Chen. We don't need to take a side. Whether it's the royal family or the Duke of Soaring Dragon, they have all already assigned us to the side of the royal family. Zhang Chen had a shadow of a smile. Except, what need does our Zhang family have to need to take a side? Zhang Chen didn't think that the royal family had a qualification to merit an attachment from him, Zhang Chen. He had chosen an opposite side from the Duke of Soaring Dragon purely due to the circumstances of the greater picture, and not because that he had chosen the royal family. He was one of a kind, and wasn't someone that any power could drive. The Soaring Dragon Manor. The events that had happened at the Jinshan Manor quickly made their way into Long Zhaofeng's ears. Worthless. Indeed a useless bunch. Long Zhaofeng had heard that after failing to seize power in a coup, those elders in the Jinshan family had all been beheaded by the Duke of Jinshan. And the Zhuan Yuan that they had painstakingly cultivated had been instantly killed with one move from the son of the Duke of Jinshan. This isn't right. The son of the Duke of Jinshan is a character as dumb as a pig. As inferior as the Zhuan Yuan is, he shouldn't have lost to someone like that. The Duke of Yanmen, Yan Jiaozhuang, was the first to feel that something was amiss. Bizarre. These matters in the capital have become more and more bizarre. Another duke shook his head. Haven't you all discovered that the Duke of Zhang Han and the Duke of Jinshan all seem to excel at being a wolf in sheep's clothing? The last time, it was Zhang Chen, and this time it was the son of the Duke of Jinshan. Wouldn't you say that these people are purposely showing weakness to an enemy? Long Zhaofeng's face darkened. According to my intelligence, this is impossible. The son of the Duke of Jinshan has always been hopelessly stupid and a good for nothing. There can be no error or doubt about that. The same goes for that Zhang Chen. Duke Long, I've been thinking that the situation in the capital has been quite subtly odd ever since the rites of heavenly worship. Many things that don't conform to common sense have happened, and it seems that Zhang Chen's shadow can be found in every matter. I feel that this brat is the source of all misfortune. 
It's said that the brat Zhang Chen was also present for the matters in the Jinshan household today. Courtmaster Wang from the Pilking Garden became dispirited whenever he spoke of this matter. Right. I feel that something is greatly amiss with the brat Zhang Chen. He was also present when we put on the pill exhibition last time. After all the events that occurred were put together and pondered over, I feel that he had long since conspired with the Hall of Healing, and that they were waiting to stomp on my Pilking Garden. Also, the royal family actually sent quite a few strong practitioners in the advanced realm of True Chi to protect him. When did this brat become so intimate with the royal family? All sorts of matter having to do with Zhang Chen were all neatly organized. All sorts of questionable points all seemed to revolve around Zhang Chen. Long Zhaofeng was also quite surprised. Can it be that we've underestimated Zhang Chen? Duke Long, this Zhang Chen must be killed. There's no news of the Duke of Zhang Han right now. I estimate that it's more than likely he's dead. If Zhang Chen is gotten rid of, then the Zhang Han dukedom would be thoroughly handed over. <clears throat> Zhang Chen must die. Long Zhaofeng nodded. Noble father, Zhu will handle this Zhang Chen. Long Juxu, standing beside Long Zhaofeng, revealed a cold smile. I once said in the Hall of Healing that he shouldn't even think of successfully passing the Hidden Dragon Trials. This time, let your daughter spill blood on the floor, and kill another group of people before entering the sect as a warning to others. If he is able to enter the final stage of martial demonstration, then Xwer, kill him. It will be as easy as stepping on an ant. The Duke of Soaring Dragon was still quite confident in his daughter's potential and talents. However, his words took another turn. In consideration of a long night being fraught with dreams and that undue delay may bring trouble, we must make additional preparations. As long as there is an opportunity before the Hidden Dragon Trials progresses to the final stage of martial demonstration, we will not let it go. Long San, I am giving this matter over to your care. You must bring back to me that Zhang Chen's head. Zhang Chen had ruined the Duke of Soaring Dragon's carefully laid plans quite a few times, making the Duke of Soaring Dragon brim with killing intent. Yes. A cold and sinister underling standing next to Long Zhaofeng responded. Killing intent reached his body. He was a practitioner of Ten Meridians True Qi. Within the Zhang Han Manor, Zhang Chen was making his final preparations for the Hidden Dragon Trials. At this moment, his level of seven meridians true chi was very stabilized. He had also successfully located the eighth Aku point. The two martial arts techniques Vast Ocean Current Splitter and Divine Ian's Fist also improved with each passing day. Each day brought substantial improvement. But Zhang Chen was actually preparing another set of techniques these days. The items he was playing with were the set of nine throwing daggers created by the Layer Feather Golden Crystal. The unique skills of throwing daggers are comparable to the bow and arrow, but are easier to manipulate than bow and arrow and with even higher elusiveness. Compared to the bow and arrow, an attack from throwing daggers was absolutely even more secretive. It was also easier to manipulate. After all, in order to manipulate a bow and arrow, one had to first notch the arrow onto the bow. This process was where the maneuverability of a bow and arrow lost out to that of throwing daggers. Throwing daggers, you knew not when they came from nor when they would be employed. A dagger in hand would have unerring accuracy. They were like an immortal from the heavens, you knew not when they came from and where they would go. The advantages of a throwing dagger lay in nimble manipulation, in concealed attacks snuffing out breath with one cold-blooded stroke. These nine throwing daggers were forged from layer feather golden crystal. This crystal is almost translucent. Aided with some skills when employing them, the daggers will almost melt away into nothingness, thoroughly becoming one with the vacant void. One had to say, these throwing daggers forged out of layer feather golden crystal encompassed an exceeding degree of coveredness and duplicity. If deployed in sudden attack, the perception of ordinary practitioners might not even be enough to see the true form of the throwing daggers. Zhang Chen planned to employ these layer feather throwing daggers often, and found a unique throwing dagger skill, and shatter flying daggers, after much exhaustive thought. As its name indicated and implied, Moonshatter Flying Daggers was a powerful force that could pierce the sun and moon and destroy the stars. Of course, with Zhang Chen's current methods, it would be quite a hyperbole to think of piercing the sun and moon. But a Moonshatter Flying Daggers skill could benefit him like adding wings to a tiger. Practicing this Moonshatter Flying Daggers will not be the work of a day and night. The remarkable ability of a Moonshatter Flying Daggers is many times more brilliant than the secret of nine laughing oceans. It's a method that nears the level of those at a heavenly level. However, the initial portion of the Moonshatter Flying Daggers is not that difficult or awkward. Four accompanying abilities had to be practiced in the course of practicing and shatter flying daggers, God's eye, ear of the zephyr, boulder's heart, psychic's head. Vision needed to be practiced first before practicing throwing daggers. Hearing, mental ability, and the perception of the seven apertures of the human head all needed to be practiced first. When vision had been trained to an extreme, a pair of eyes could be used to observe all the planes beneath the heavens. One throwing dagger could cause the enemy to have no avenue for escape whether in the heavens or underground. When hearing had been trained to an extreme, the ears could discern direction from the wind. Even if you attacked from all directions, all would be beheaded wherever the throwing daggers landed. When mental ability had been trained to an extreme, the heart would be as firm as a rock. Even if there were a thousand, or tens of thousands of illusions, one would not be entranced by them. One flying dagger would point straight towards the actual body and behead the enemy. And when a perception of the seven apertures of the human head were trained to an extreme, the seven apertures would be opened and the entire world would be in your perception. There would be no secrets, no door to heaven, nor crack to the underground, that an enemy could take refuge in. Of course, who knew how many years it would take to practice them and shatter flying daggers to an extreme level, and how many years it would take to reach an extreme level in the four accompanying abilities.